Yes, uh, I'm sharing my screen. And yep. can you please confirm that you can see my slide? You see your slides. Okay. Okay. As I say, keep asking questions, keep answering the polls, and uh, keep chat going as well. And thanks once again for everyone for coming. Yes, please. Um, there's no right or wrong questions, and sometimes we do not even have right or wrong answers. So please put your questions in the chat. Okay, so um, yeah, I'm obsessed with two things. One is our brain, the other one is a space. So what I'm doing is try to combine my two interests in my research. And my talk today is going to focus on, um, are we ready to go to Mars? And what happened to our brain and the vestibular system in space? Now, would you go to Mars? I think it's a pretty exciting journey. However, we need to take into account many different factors that play a role into this amazing trip. Some of them are technology-related factors, getting the right trajectory for Mars, um, manage fuel, um, landing on the surface of the planet. Some of them are factors related to the physical environment. There are extreme temperatures, there's no atmospheric pressure, and there are a lot of radiation that might affect our life. And also there are many factors related to our health and well-being. So as soon as we will have people landing on Mars, we need to take account that there is alter gravity or non-terrestrial gravity, that they sleep, a uh, circle might change, there might going to be delays in communication of pretty much 20 minutes, which means that if you're going to send a message to a friend, it takes 20 minutes to arrive and then it takes other 20 minutes for them to reply. So if you're just asking, how are you doing? It's going to take a few hours in order to know whether they had a nice or a bad day. And finally, isolation and being confined very far from home. So absolutely great idea to go to Mars, absolutely exciting, but it's probably not so easy. And I would say that is perhaps the ultimate challenge to uh, human health, as well as our ability to adapt to extreme environments. But what is gravity? I'm particularly interested in how our brain can adjust to non-terrestrial gravity, such as the one on Mars. And what is gravity? Well, as Albert Einstein say, gravity is the first thing which you don't think about. Can you see it? Can you feel it? Can you smell it? Probably not. Gravity is always here, is always on. Technically speaking, gravity is the attraction that our planet Earth is exerting on all the objects, is the pull of our planet on all the objects, including our body and our brain. So on Earth, gravity is pretty much around 9.8 meter by second square. That technically is defined as 1G. So on Earth, we have 1G acceleration. Now, maybe you have a cup of tea, coffee, glass of water. I do have water here and you can do quite easy movement, such as lifting a glass of water, and you can try with your glass of water or cup of tea or whatever, and you can do this movement very, very easily. However, what your brain is doing is sending a lot of motor information in order to counteract this 1G acceleration that is always here. And how does our brain know about gravity? Well, the vestibular system plays fundamental role in telling our brain the magnitude and direction of gravity. The vestibular system is inside our ear. We have two vestibular systems, one on the left, one on the right, and it's a beautiful, sophisticated organ. It's the best sensory system ever, in my opinion. So if we zoom in into the vestibular system, we can see this sort of structure that is called autoritz organ. So essentially, if your head is upright, then we have many different tiny, 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 tiny stones align here on a sort of fluid. And these stones are perpendicular to the direction of gravity. Now, in the fluid, there are many different cells that are called a receptor that can detect movement of these stones. And therefore, if you now move your head, for instance, you tilt your head towards the back, the situation is going to change a lot in your vestibular system. So if your head is tilted like this, what happens is that because of physical gravity on our planet, the stones start to shift, which is going to be created by a shift of the fluid, which is going to trigger an action potential, a response in the cells, which is then transferred to the brain. 
And by means of this beautiful mechanism, our brain knows exactly what is our head in space all the time. However, our brain is also taking into account other sensory information from our eye, from our limbs, from our proprioceptive system, as well as from our internal visceral organ. And the idea is that he's taking all this information, um, integrating all of them in this internal model of terrestrial gravity, which is the, essentially the model that allowed us to lift a glass of water almost without any effort here on Earth. But now, our internal model of gravity has evolved during all the years of evolution, and we are perfectly adjusted, perfectly adapted to this terrestrial gravity. And things might change a lot if suddenly we are in a different gravity environment, such as on Mars. On Mars, gravity is 3.7 meter by second square, which corresponds to 0.3 G, which is much, much less than the uh, gravity present on our planet. So would you think it's going to be easy to live in this brand new gravitational environment? Mm, probably not because we know that having a human body in altered gravity, a body in space, is going to change a lot of the bodily physiology. So for instance, there is a shift in the fluids from the legs to the head if terrestrial gravity is not longer there. Muscles start to shrink because of the absence of movement counteracting gravity, and bones start to have um, a decrease in density. And also because of this shift of fluid, vision might get worse because of the pressure that is exerted on the brain. And potentially, there might be also changes in our brain as well. And this was quite evident from the first space missions, that there are brain and behavioral alterations during space flight. So it's not easy for us to be in outer space. So for instance, after 100 days in space, what has been shown is that the structure of the brain are going to change. Now here you can see a picture of the brain. It's like that I've cut a bit of your head, remove the top part of your head, and then you can see inside the brain. And essentially, we are looking at how different brain areas, how different bits of the brain talk to each other. And it has been shown that after 100 days in space, there is a much reduced communication between these areas. And one of the key areas that get affected by that is a vestibular area, which is called insular cortex. It has also been shown that because of this shift in fluids, other structures get much bigger. For instance, you can see here that the ventricles, it's how it calls, get much bigger after being in space. And it's also true that people in space are getting extremely sick. About 80% of astronauts in the first hours and day in Alter gravity start to experience a very strong motion sickness, the worst motion sickness that you can imagine. And this is not just about vomiting and getting a little bit nosy, it's also causing perceptual illusions as well as disorientation. And finally, senses and movement are also affected by being in an alter gravity environment. So here you can see people try walking on the lunar surface, and even an action such as walking, which is very simple, gets very, very difficult when the usual amount of gravity is not longer there. And you can imagine that there are other factors such as how we take decision, how we can interact with other people that also might get affect in this extreme alter gravity environment. So in my lab, what I'm doing is looking at whether we can simulate alter gravity on Earth and combining methods from cognitive neuroscience and psychology in order to see how people respond to alter gravity. And I would like to talk to you about a couple of examples of that, if my presentation works. Yeah, it does. Great. So we got recently interested in the idea of pain. Uh, pain is a sensory signal, but it is super important for us because it can protect our body. And I want you to look at how pain can be affected by alter gravity. And what I've done was having participants in my lab they were attached to a, a 3D tilting table, which is a big machine in, we, we, in which we can strap people on and we can place them upright in a position that's coherent with gravity or in this head down bed rest orientation in which the head is six degrees below the feet. And this is known to cause alter gravitational information signaled by the vestibular organs. 
and each dot here is a single participant. And we measure how they perceive pain attached on the fingertip. So not a pleasant experiment. And we found that they experienced much less pain when they were in the head down bed rest condition. And similarly, we got exactly the same results when we used virtual reality to manipulate the visual information about gravity by asking participants to watch videos in which a ball was floating in terrestrial or martial gravitational information. And I have a question for you. Please reply in the chat. I will have a look later. Do you think that being a superhero without feeling any pain on Mars is going to be good or bad? And the other question that we also wanted to ask is about the ability to take the right decision. And I would like to do a short demo with you. If you're at home, please stand and be upright. And now you're going to listen to a train of beep sounds. Every time that you hear a beep, I would like you to name aloud one digit between one to nine. So every time that you hear a beep sound, please aloud say a number between one to nine. And please try to be as random as possible. Okay, ready, steady, go. Okay, so this is a random number generation task, which involve a lot of your frontal areas in the brain. And we use that in order to look at how people were able to um, make random sequences of um, number in both upright orientation and at down bed rest. Now, the cool things about this simple task is that people don't know what we were measuring. Um, and we can look after uh, the sequence that they generate. And we can see that sometimes people are a little bit stuck with the same number. And sometimes they are actually producing randomness. So we can evaluate whether they have a routine, stereotyped behavior, or whether they are happy to generate novel behavior. And we found that when people were in the head down bed rest condition, they were much, much less random, which is not optimal for this task. So now that you know the task, you can try later this evening or later during the day in, and see whether you also are less random when you are lying on the floor. And to sum up, in conclusion, human space exploration is absolutely great is we are just at the beginning of a new space era in which we will see people going back to the moon um, probably traveling to mars and commercial space flights is going to be a reality so we can get a ticket in order to go in space however we need to take into account how, how our brain is going to react to these altered gravity environments gravity is a sensory signal but it's not just a background sensory signal. I think that it is one of the fundamental system. And indeed, I would like to suggest that gravity is an absolute reference for human behavior. And in order to ensure the success of long-term space flights, such as a journey to Mars, we need to take into account how to get prepared in terms of training and how support uh, astronauts during flight. And here I'm talking about uh, brain and vestibular support. And on this note, I uh, Say thank you and waiting for your questions. Thanks so much, Elisa. Um, would you go to Mars? Ah, uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> probably. <laughs> Maybe that's what we need to be, right? So, uh, so yeah, actually, it's a, it just a thing out of curiosity for myself. Um, um, uh, yeah, someone actually uh, by Elon Musk, like. Everyone wants to go to Mars, all the science fiction is about Mars, but is it the best gravity for us and um, to navigate Mars and things like this it is so important. But um, actually, the what Bing was presenting in birds, a different balance system, is that something that you could think could be a useful addition? So create a system that people who wear it so they have two balance systems are, are given one and an artificial one like a bird. I think it's... Um, in my opinion, it's not really about getting a, a, another system. It's more is try to make our system much more flexible um, and get rid of this very strong gravity reference that it has been built up during our evolution. So we should make it much more flexible, much more adaptable than the prior that we have at the moment, than the reference that we are using at the moment. Uh, yeah, so... The there are two questions, one um, from Samantha and one from Adam that kind of are the same thing is, 
how would you train yourself to reduce, uh, uh, train your brain and train your body for going to space to reduce this kind of sickness? And actually, there's a one that I want to ask is, can you predict who gets sick and how sick they'll get? Okay, so um, in the past, uh, well, even now, there is a lot of training in terms of uh, asking participants to, uh, asking potential astronauts to spend time during parabolic flight in simulated altered gravity on Earth, on the centrifuge and so on. Now, the idea of selecting people in function of whether they are getting sick is not longer there. And I think that this is a nice decision because motion sickness is a little bit unpredictable. Um, you know, even if you have motion sickness for car or buses, sometimes you get it, sometimes you don't. So there are many other factors that are going to um, play a role. And also think about motion sickness, not just as something that is, ah. Oh, this is a side effect. Yes, it's not pleasant, but it's a mechanism for our body to protect itself. So we should perhaps learn more about that and try to see how we can get people prepared to motion sickness and get um, perhaps some in-flight support as well. That is not only medication. So currently people are using medications. Uh, actually, this is the more, the thing is that uh, gravity is so important in birth and the vestibular system helps orientate the head. That's going to be another vestibular issue that's going to um, uh, come about uh, um, in space. That we, you know, gravity is important. Gravity is imp important, and I'm over the moon because I just started a project with chicks for the first time, <laughs> combining birds and gravity. Um, so we are just looking at what happened in terms of uh, gravity reference in chicks. Um, which is super exciting, but we started only two weeks ago. Well, that is exciting. So